It is sort of different, so I decided to do a separate segment, but it kind of follows up on my earlier segment about Tulsi Gabbard, the press, and the establishment. You see, I saw this story from Newsweek. Tulsi Gabbard says Donald Trump is unfit to serve after president commends her for voting president on impeachment. Oh, oh heavens. It sounds like Tulsi Gabbard is, is, you know, turning her back on Trump after he defended her. In fact, what this shows us is the media has accidentally revealed, oh heavens, that Tulsi and Trump might have, I don't know, integrity. And this is exactly, I think this is a really, really good example on a macro level of what I experience as someone who's not a big fan of Trump, not a Trump supporter, but still can have a conversation and get respect from Trump supporters, even if I criticize the guy. You see, let me explain something to you. Tulsi Gabbard voted present, right? Most of you know this, that's not I want to explain, but she voted present. And Donald Trump said, oh, give her respect even though she has criticized him. Is that so hard? Now look, Trump is, he's the kind of guy who will uh, praise someone. He's a really good person. And then as soon as that person turns on him, oh, he's a really bad person, never liked him, right? But here we have Tulsi Gabbard and Donald Trump. It's not the first time Trump has praised her. He praised her when Hillary Clinton smeared her. And it's not the first time Tulsi Gabbard went after Trump. She goes after Trump pretty hard. But guess what? Oh, lo and behold, when you take a principled position and do the right thing, Trump and Tulsi were both are, are, are able to recognize what the right thing is. So now Tulsi isn't defending Trump by any means, but she refused to vote on a partisan, you know, on a partisan impeachment. Respectable. And Trump was like, sure. So this is what I, I deal with. See, I, I like Tulsi. I, I perhaps I, I think she's the better choice. Well, heavens, it's true. But Trump supporters don't come to me and threaten me and insult me and attack me, ban me, try to get me banned, you know, try and ruin my career or anything like that. They say, oh, well, agree to disagree. And this is what we're seeing, but the media doesn't seem to understand. They're shocked. Why would Tulsi say something about Trump after he just praised her? Let me read this and I'll explain to you exactly why. Newsweek reports, two days after President Donald Trump gave Rep Tulsi Gabbard respect for casting a neutral vote on his impeachment, it was a protest vote, she tweeted an earlier interview in which she said he was unfit to serve as commander in chief. When it came to both impeachment articles, obstruction of Congress and abuse of power, Gabbard, a Democrat and presidential candidate, was the only member of the House to cast her vote as present. Here's the way I want to bring this up. I certainly don't think Tulsi likes Trump, but I certainly see that she's willing to act on principle. And I can see that Trump, for all his faults, is willing to praise someone when they do that. But more importantly, other Democrats voted no. Where is the outrage? Where is the media slam? Where is the smear? Apparently, it doesn't matter. Tulsi is the only one they don't like. They go on to say, despite her decisive break with Democrats, Gabbard doesn't seem interested in accepting this past weekend's praise from Trump, a move that seems emblematic of the candidate's careful dance on impeachment thus far. While she said the president committed wrongdoing, she's also blasted Democrats for the tribal animosities that have fueled their investigation to date. I give her respect. She didn't vote the other day. I give her a lot of respect because she knew it was wrong. She took a pass. Trump said Saturday in West Palm Beach, Florida, according to USA Today. I, I have absolute respect for that statement from Trump. Now I get it. Trump's, in my opinion, it's, you know, she, did, she did right by Trump. Trump does right by her. If she voted yes, Trump would say, do nothing Democrat. But I mean, it makes sense because impeachment is ridiculous. I disagree with Tulsi when she says that she thinks Trump is guilty of wrongdoing. I disagree with Kyle Kalinske when he says that Trump clearly did this for political reasons. I think that's absurd. And not once has anyone tried to prove that Trump's intent was in any way related to 2020. But this shows me, it, it kind of reflects on what I experience, that I can go down and sit with a Trump supporter and say, here's why I like Tulsi. And they'll say, mm, well, I disagree. I don't think she's that good. I'll be like, oh, I disagree with Trump. And that's it. And then, and then we eat cheeseburgers and you know we watch TV and we get along just fine. Granted, I understand it's a, it's a little bit different with Tulsi. She's clearly not super excited about, you know, Trump's praise. But I think it shows that Trump isn't, you know, well, let's just keep reading. They say, in an apparent response, Gabbard posted her interview on the Hill TV's Rising segment on Monday. In it, she declined to explain, she declined to explain her neutral vote on impeachment, but maintained that the president's foreign policy decisions were counter to American interests and national security. Look, there's no question in my mind that Donald Trump is unfit to serve as president and commander in chief. I've said this over and over again. Gabbard told hosts Crystal Ball and Sagar and Jetty, I am running for president to defeat him for that reason. I respect that statement. Tulsi Gabbard is a, as a major in the National Guard. I absolutely respect her when she says she thinks Trump is unfit to serve as president because she's, listen, 
There are a lot of people I don't trust when they say this. They accuse Trump of being mentally ill. They, try, they say he's trying to subvert foreign policy. No, uh, Tulsi Gabbard said this. He launched an illegal and unconstitutional attack launching missiles into Syria. We don't see any talk in Congress about that. <laughs> That's like one of the biggest and first criticisms I had about Trump uh, in his president. Well, not necessarily the first because, you know, I've criticized them a lot. But even Trump supporters criticized the missile attack in Syria. So what's this? Tulsi Gabbard actually made a legitimate point about why she doesn't like Donald Trump. I respect that. What I don't respect is when people try and claim he's mentally ill. The dude's not mentally ill. Trump's eccentric. He's narcissistic. He's arrogant, overconfident, boisterous. There's a lot of things about Trump that are some people think are bad that are good, but crazy is not one of them. You can call, you know, I'll tell you this, crazy like Fox. I don't mean like a compliment. I mean, he does things that seem to be accidents that tend to work out. The economy is doing really, really well. His support is growing. He's clearly got some kind of strategy. The one thing I want to see from Democrats is legitimate criticism. But guess what? Here's why I really wanted to talk about this. Do you know what the Democratic establishment and the media love more than anything, which they refuse to criticize? War. So you'll notice that people like Kyle Kalinske, people like me, even though we disagree on a lot of political issues, Yet the media doesn't like what we're about or we're likely to disagree with them because they're warmongers. You know, when, when Trump did the missile strike in Syria, all of a sudden the press was like, is this Trump's true presidential moment? Oh, oh, that was it. Without a congressional order firing missiles into a foreign country, that's when we want to praise the president. And that's probably why they let Obama get away with so much because of all the things he was doing with drones and blowing people up. They love the war machine. They love the military industrial complex. They love the, they love the weapons deals. And when Trump plays that game, they actually praise him. And so Tulsi called him out for something legitimate. Okay, look, if you are a Trump supporter and you like that Trump fired those missiles, fine, you're allowed to. I think it's wrong, completely disagree. I believe it was unconstitutional. And I believe the United States should not be levying war in foreign countries without congressional approval. But Congress doesn't care about that. What do they care about? Non-statutory impeachment. This is why I can't stand Congress, okay? There's very few Republicans who get a pass from me. I can't stand the whole system. And it's one of the reasons I like Tulsi. You know, when, 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 you, when I try and ask people why they don't like the president, and, and Trump supporters totally get this, they have no answer. They say, oh, well, you know, there's just so much that he's done that's wrong. And I'm like, okay, you don't care. You don't care about what the U.S. government does that's wrong. You don't care about what they do in your name. You don't care about what they do with your tax dollars. You get these Democrats on stage saying things like, uh, we're going to tax the rich to pay for health care. And I'm like, how about we just stop funding all of these massive military expenditures overseas, building roads in countries where we don't live? So while I disagree with Tulsi on a lot of issues, the one thing I, I think is if we're going to get somebody in politics who's saying we should stop these wars and stop wasting money, yeah, I'm likely to support them. And you know what? That's why Trump won over a lot of people. Now, you might, you might be a Trump supporter. You might like the guy. You might think he's doing right. But I'll tell you what. He lost a lot of people, or at least he lost some support from people when he started doing things like this, okay? Because he did a commando raid in Yemen. He's talking about sending troops to Saudi Arabia. He's, he's doing weapons deals with Saudi Arabia. He's talking about sent, having our troops remain guarding oil fields in Syria. He did the missile strike. Now, there's some areas where he's been better than previous administrations, and I'll give credit for that, okay? He's pulled back. He's talking about withdrawing from Afghanistan, and so there are some net positives, Obama would ramp things up, okay? But he's not perfect, and he campaigned on things, and he didn't necessarily complete that. He didn't, he, he, look, he fired miss, 59 Tomahawk missiles into Syria. We do not need to be involved in that. The Syria war is all about Europe and, their, and the natural gas stuff and Burisma. It's all connected. It is this big international game that we've always been playing. And, and, and the way I've always explained to people is the way I view, you know, what, the way the world should be or at least I hope it to be, is that we as, an, as Americans focus on ourselves, improving our own country, developing our own technology, protecting our borders, providing aid, and doing international endeavors through cooperation instead of with the, you know, the barrel of a gun. Instead, since, since World War II, America has been about building military bases, sending our troops overseas, getting involved in proxy wars, um, and, and the Cold War, I understand. I understand there are concerns about the rapid expansion of Russia and China. Totally get it. Totally get it. But I think there's, there, there's, we, we, we can't keep playing this game. We're not going to be the world dominating United States of America. I do not, when I travel the world, I do not like the idea that it's like, oh, you're an American and we know what America does to maintain its power. No, I don't like it. 
I don't think it's, it's, it's uh, moral or ethical to do, you know, drone strikes in Yemen to aid foreign countries in their, in their regional conflicts because they pay well. So Trump deserves criticism for this. But anyway, to the point, you talk to a regular Trump person, they're not going to be able to tell you. I, I'm, I'm sorry, not uh, anti-Trump person, that's what I mean. They're not going to be able to tell you what they don't like about the president. But you get someone like Tulsi and she straight up says, like, he launches missiles into Syria, dude. If Trump pledges never to do it, I don't know if I would trust him. Okay, and I'll tell you this, I don't even 100% trust Tulsi Gabbard because I have been tricked so many times to say, fool me, you know, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. But she's, she seems sincere. She's called it out. She's got integrity. She's, she, she's at, probably, as far as I'm concerned, the best person in the house, period. Okay, voting present was the, in my, it was, it was spot on. It was, it was saying, look, the partisanship has to stop. But when asked, she straight up calls it out. So you know what, man? I did these two segments because, well, I, I, don't, I don't typically do a ton of segments on Tulsi. I am a huge fan of hers. I disagree with a lot of her policy. I absolutely do. Um, I, I, I disagree with some of her, her positions on Trump because I, I, don't, I don't hate Trump as much as a lot of these people on the left do. But I'm just so sick and tired of, there, there's, no, you know, there's no option for me. And there's no option for sane, rational people like me. And too many people who are like in the similar space to me, they do, they just check the D. They go, they, they, they go to the voting booth and they say, I don't know, Democrat. They end up voting for these lunatics, these people who won't call out the war machine, these people who don't know why they don't like the president, these people who are talking about a second impeachment and they haven't even filed the first articles. And it's frustrating. But um, it's fun to rant about. <clears throat> you know, let, let, me, let, me, let me put it this way. It is every so often... I will give you a few frustrated, the Democrats are nuts segments. I, I do it all the time, um, but these past two, it's, it's, it's venting. Who am I gonna vote for? Probably no one, probably no one, but they insult me because of it, because I call them out. I don't know, you get the point, whatever. Stick around, I got one more segment coming up in a few minutes and I will see you all then.